Hello everyone, my name is Mark Hervieux. I'm IoT Marketing Manager in ST Microelectronics America. I'm very happy to introduce the webinar of today, Getting It Right the First Time, Accelerate Law Implementation. This ST webinar is also sponsored by Machine2, a Comcast company, and Murata. In the IoT world, connectivity is critical, and LP1, standing for Low Power Wide Access network is widely present. LoRa is an LP1 technology that is very well suited to support IoT use cases, especially for things that are battery operated and need to send small amount of data on a regular basis and staying in sleep mode in between. We are proposing today a webinar exposing the ST LoRa dev kit running on machine queue network and using Murata modules showing how simple it is to use and create new differentiated products using that technology. The webinar agenda will consist first of a short introduction of ST, MachineQ, and Murata with an emphasis on IoT. Then we will go in more detail by providing an overview of the ST LoRa dev kit used for prototyping, how to get started in using it, how to run the MachineQ IoT platform called MQ Central, and then explain the go-to-market strategy using the Murata modules. We will then present how to extend the ST LoRa dev kit into an asset tracker. ST has all the building blocks for IoT. These blocks allow to move a thing into a smart thing. If we take a very simple example, such as a barbecue, it is a matter of sensing the environmental, the motion, controlling the fan, being able to process, manage the battery, and mainly being able to communicate all of this basic information back to the cloud. These basic blocks are the critical pieces that when put together create the IoT solutions. For this, having a coherent ecosystem is critical, so embed developer can easily go to market with new innovative products. ST is a semiconductor company embracing the IoT movement. Our portfolio includes all the key building blocks, especially the processing with STM32 microcontroller, security, sensor, connectivity, motor control, power and energy management, and many others. Looking at few market data, we ship more than 3 billion microcontroller STM32 and our number two worldwide. We shipped also more than 14 billion MEMS sensors, and we are number one in motion sensor, number two in pressure sensor. ST is overall number three in semiconductor for industrial segment. To reach such market level, ST has built an IoT strategy based on development kit with polished and documented solutions distributed to the mass market. This enables to help the embedded developers by accelerating their development and gaining in time to market. For that, we built a comprehensive IoT ecosystem with a wide variety of hardware development kit, a large amount of software and tools, and an ST community for support, and a partner program that extends ST capability to wider IoT use cases. ST-IoT ecosystem is mainly articulated around the STM32 microcontroller for the processing. STM32 includes a very large family with almost 1,000 parts, all based of the ARM Cortex-M series. We have a 10 years longevity commitment and have more than 40,000 customers using it today. The ST-LoRa dev kit is using the STM32L0. It is an ultra low power microcontroller that can get down to 0 0.3 microamp in standby mode, allowing a very long battery life with a very fast wake-up time. Also, ST has a very large portfolio of MEMS sensors covering motion, environmental, interactivity, macroactuators, and even optical, allowing a very wide range of use cases. MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical Systems. The MEMS 
manufacturing evolved from the process technology in semiconductor device fabrication. Because of this, they are very small form factor and are ultra low power. In the ST LoRa Dev Kit, we are exposing the environmental MEMS, such as temperature, humidity, pressure, and the motion MEMS, such as 3D axis, accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. ST is also working on many connectivity solutions, especially local connectivity such as NFC, Bluetooth BLE, that can complement nicely the LP1 subgigahertz technology such as LoRa and Sigfox. ST is also involved in other wireless technologies such as Wi-Fi, cellular LT, CATM, and NDIoT, but mainly through partnerships. As a summary, ST IoT ecosystem is very broad allowing to address a very wide set of use cases across the IoT verticals. Think smart home, smart city, and smart industry. We offer to embed developers a very large variety of IoT hardware platforms that are modular or form factor oriented, a large set of software packages, including the four major cloud supports. The ST LoRa Dev Kit presented today use ST board and has been initiated using one of these software packages. Hello everyone, my name is Maggie Bozak. I'm the technical product manager at Machine Q, and I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce you to our company and platform. Machine Q is a Comcast company focused on IoT in the global enterprise B2B market. We deliver a best in class IoT management platform that enables your company to manage and scale your own dedicated IoT networks with any LoRa-based device or application. We offer fully integrated and secure LoRa gateways for nearly any indoor or outdoor use case, as well as SaaS-based enterprise-grade management software built to help you manage thousands of gateways and millions of devices. Let's talk about the technology in more detail. MachineQ offers an end-to-end -end platform that delivers highly scalable and secure dedicated LoRa wireless connectivity for your business. As Mark touched on earlier, LoRa technology has revolutionized IoT by enabling data communication over a long range while using very little power. Our comprehensive solution starts with the hardware. Our gateways are engineered by in-house LoRa experts and have certified custom firmware for each gateway model ensuring optimal connectivity. We offer best-in-class indoor and outdoor gateways that are configurable with Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or 4G LTE backhaul options, and even arrive pre-provisioned to the machine queue platform and activated through a simple QR scan on our mobile app. Moving on to our software and infrastructure, the machine queue platform is built and supported by an engineering team with decades of experience building the largest ISP network in the world. It is designed for millions of units at scale and is hosted in geo-redundant data centers for high availability and minimum latency. It includes well-documented APIs to simplify interaction with your cloud application, whether it's in a public cloud like Azure or AWS, or hosted privately. MQ Central is the centerpiece and front end of our MQ Core architecture and is designed to provide a seamless global infrastructure anywhere. This is our cloud-based, fully integrated gateway and device management software platform and is built for enterprise grade scalability. MQ Central enables users to provision devices, manage gateways on the network, understand the connectivity health of those gateways and devices, manage users, and set custom notifications. We'll be using MQ Central in detail during our demo later in the webinar. That's it for me for now. I'll be back with a demo later, like I said, but if you need more detail on our products, you can simply email us at info at machinecube.com. Who is Murata? We'll look at Murata, its product overview and connectivity solutions in detail. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for attending this webinar. I also want to thank ST and Machine Q for allowing Murata to participate in this webinar. To start with, 
a quick introduction to Mirada will be covered. Mirada involvement in IoT will be explained. Later on, Mirada LoRa module will be covered in detail. As shown in the slide, Mirada is an international corporation with worldwide headquarters based in Japan with many subsidiaries all over the world. As of today, Mirada revenue is approximately more than 13.7 billion US dollars. Mirada has been known in electronic industry as a passive component supplier as many customers use capacitors and inductors from Mirada. But as you can see now, Mirada products has expanded to many other component types as shown, including wireless modules, which will be the focus of discussion today. Mirada connectivity products has a focus on the market segments shown in this slide, including IoT, which we believe has a huge growth potential and to meet the future demand in IoT and in recognition of the different product types required for IoT market. Mirada has modules that support connectivity technology such as Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, or Wi-Fi, along with modules for LTE, CAT M1, MBIoT, and LoRa. Mirada's wireless connectivity products serve various markets and can be classified into four categories as shown here. The first three categories are modules that address short-range wireless connectivity. These are Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth combo, or Bluetooth BLE module solutions. A complete platform can be broken down into either a Linux or Android operating system-based solutions, or a non-operating system RTOS type operating system-based solutions. Category one module solutions are available for a microprocessor-based platform, such as IMX6 Solo X that runs Linux operating system. These solutions offer a high throughput performance for applications such as video camcorder or digital still camera. The next category includes module solutions that can attach to a microcontroller, such as ARM Cortex-M4. These module solutions can cover many of the IoT applications that require a low throughput performance, such as smart thermostat as an example. For customers who want cloud-enabled solutions, Murata has modules with electric amp or ALA agent loaded into the module for ease of design. Lastly, long-range IoT connectivity applications, which is the focus of this webinar, is addressed by Murata with the LoRa modules. In addition to LoRa modules are a sub-gigahertz proprietary protocol-based module solutions like ENT modules or available from Murata. Finally, for customers who have applications requiring license band solutions, Murata has CADIM-1 and MBIT modules for this market. More information is available on wireless.murata.com, so please take a look at your convenience. Without waiting more, I propose now to look into the details of the ST LoRa desk kit. It is behaving like a real device on the LoRa network. It is able to sense the environmentals and motion using STMEMS to process using the STM32L0 and communicate to LoRa network. It is an open hardware allowing you to add your own differentiation for wide use cases. At system level, it communicates to the first machine queue gateway that is in range. Once the device has joined the LoRa network, we are able to fully monitor the device on the cloud using the machine queue MQ Central tool where the device has been previously provisioned. The web link here provides you with a direct access to the guide and material that we'll go over today. Let's look now at what is composing the desk here. 
First of all, we have the baseboard called BL072Z LR11 published on the ST.com. It is a host where all the embedded code is running. The board includes a Murata module that includes an STM32L0 and the Centec Radio SX1276. The STM32L0 has 20 kbyte RAM, 192 kbyte flash, and 6 kbyte EEPROM. The board also includes the LST link that allows to power up the board, but mainly to debug the code in step by step. Finally, it includes an Arduino V3 connector that is critical for extendibility. Using that connector, you can either add other Arduino boards from ST or the industry offering new features, or even blue wire your own added value. Then the dev kit is completed with an ST Arduino sensor shield connected using the Arduino connector. That board brings a wide range of motion sensors such as 3D accelerometer, 3D gyroscope, 3D magnometer, and environmental sensors such as temperature, humidity, pressure. Note that a DL24 connector allows to extend further the sensors to the ones new produced by ST. You can find the full list on www.st.com and search for STEVAL-MKSTAR and find more than 50 active DL4 compatible extensions. Please also note that the Arduino connector is extended allowing additional shield to be connected on top of it. Regarding the firmware side, the solution is available on MachineQ landing page for the ST LoRa dev kit, where you will be able to find a binary, but also the full source code for free. The project has been built using the IDE Kyle from ARM. This is a professional grade IDE that is free for STM32L0. Please see the link below to get access to a free unlimited license. For those who are already familiar with the ST LoRa stack published on ST.com called iCubeLR1, it is reusing it, but we are adding more features. We are adding the support of the sensor driver and its capability to transmit the raw data to the cloud. We are also adding a menu to be able to manage the machine queue credentials so we have to, can avoid to have to recompile for any new devices and the management of the transmission duty cycle. This menu will be usable when the dev kit is connected to a computer running a serial terminal. As a summary, I invite you to go to the machine queue landing page for the ST LoRa dev kit, where you'll be able to buy the hardware, have access to the software in binary and source code. Please note that you can also acquire the hardware boards on ST.com where all the authorized distribution channels are listed. Let's now dive into our demo using the ST LoRa dev kit and the machine queue platform. The first thing we'd like to do is welcome you to the machine queue platform. And we'll do that by creating an account on the machine queue store at https colon double slash store.machinequeue.com which will allow you to purchase the starter kit as well as log into MQ Central and leverage all the tools and resources available from Machine Q. Once logged into the store, navigate to the dev kit section where you'll find a special offer for our $199 starter kit that includes an MQ Gateway as well as an ST LoRa dev kit. This offer also includes three months access to our platform after which you'll have the opportunity to continue working with MachineQ on a monthly fee basis that includes access to the MachineQ platform with no restrictions on data or device count. When your dev kit arrives, head to the machinequeue.com slash stlora dev kit site where you'll find detailed instructions and sample code to get you started. We'll go through that process in detail now. All right, let's cover what you need to get started. All of the hardware, of course, the gateway and the two ST boards that have arrived in your box, your machine queue account that you created on the store earlier, the dev UI, app UI, and app key, which are printed on a card inside your package. And you'll also need to download the Keel IDE 
as well as the terminal emulator such as TerraTerm, Minicom, or Screen, links for which you'll find on this page. Today, we'll be using TerraTerm. Now that we have everything we need, we'll log into MQ Central to activate the gateway. Though I'll show you how to do this here, you can also download the MachineQ mobile app, as I noted earlier in the introduction, for your Android or iOS device and simply scan the QR code on the gateway. That will result in the same activation. To activate via MQ Central, first click on the Gateways tab on the left-hand nav. If you have a new account, your gateway list will be empty and you can click Add a Gateway either in the center of the page or the top right as I'm showing here and the details pop up will appear. Let's fill in the details. First, give your gateway a friendly name that's easily identifiable. Next, choose the model, which is likely the Conduit AP. The MAC address and node ID will be printed on the back of that gateway. The antenna gain can be left to zero because we'll be using the internal antenna of that gateway and not adding an external antenna to it. Your location type will be indoor. You can leave GPS enabled and cellular enabled unclicked as those features are likely not included. Please also enter the latitude and longitude of the location where you're installing this gateway as well as the height above the ground in meters. Next, let's provision your dev kit on the MQ platform so that it can successfully join the network when we have it up and running. First, click the device tab on the left-hand nav. Once on the devices page, you'll again click add a device as your list will be empty here as well. And you'll be presented with this pop-up where we'll enter the pertinent information. In the first field, give your device a name you can easily recognize and remember like we did with the gateway. Next, enter the dev UI, app UI, and app key that were provided on a printed card in your package. From the drop-down menus, choose the service and device profiles shown here, as well as the decoder type. Note that for clarity, I've added a call out of the expanded device profile name as it didn't quite fit on my page. You can leave everything else as is, as we'll discuss output profiles a bit later. Now that your gateway is up and running and your dev kit is provisioned, let's set it up. First, make sure to plug your mini USB cable in the correct port on the board. You want to look for the SQ-Link label and then plug the other end of the USB into your computer. Second, from the instructions page we looked at earlier on machinekey.com, download the binary file, which will allow you to program the board with its unique dev UI, app UI, and app key that we used in the provisioning process. This will allow your device to start sending sensor data to the machinekey platform. Once downloaded, unzip the file, then go to your file explorer and find devices and drives on PC or locations in Mac and the board will appear as a drive there. Drag and drop the .bin file onto your board. As it's uploading, the board's LED will flash rapidly. While that's happening, let's set up your terminal window. Launch your chosen terminal application and choose the port in which your board is connected. For me, I'm using TerraTerm, so this is what it looks like. I go to the setup menu and choose serial port and change the speed to that in figure one. Then I select setup and terminal and change the settings to those in figure two. Going back to the board, now press the black reset button, which should prompt you to enter the credentials that we discussed, the dev UI, app UI, and app key. Now that the board has its credentials, it will attempt to join the machine queue network, and once successful, it will start sending sensor data. See the far right graphic for further information. For those of you who would like to dive deeper into the development process, we've provided the source code for the sample project that's now running on your board. That download is also available on the same instruction page that we looked at earlier. After you've downloaded and installed the Keel IDE, click Project in the top nav, then Open Project. You will need to navigate to your downloaded and unzipped project file. There, you'll want to follow the file tree that I've highlighted in the box marked one above. 
note that it's a fairly long file tree. Once the project is open, you'll want to build that project, which will allow the necessary files to be generated and included in your entire project. That button is labeled number two. Before we go further, I'd like to point out that the credentials you entered on the terminal screen are in a file called commissioning.h, which you can find via the Keel search feature, which is only visible after you've built the project. I've highlighted commissioning.h with number three. Going further into the project, let's take a quick look at the main.c file. In my case, my main file has a slightly longer name, but in any case, you'll find it in the file tree on the left under projects slash endnote. Scrolling through the file, you'll first see the commissioning procedure you went through on the terminal, followed by the LoRa join procedure. The screenshot I've taken here starts with that LoRa join procedure. Next, you'll start seeing all the sensor readings followed by a LoRa send command to get the data up to the cloud. If those packets were sent up as confirmed data, the board will wait for an ACK from the network server. We'll take a look at this interaction between the device and the MQ platform on the next slide. Switching back to MQ Central, let's take a look and see all the traffic between our dev kit and the MQ platform. Click the Devices tab, where you should see the dev kit we just provisioned, and click the far right arrow in the device line which will take you to the device entity page. On the left, you'll see an example device entity page where you'll find a lot of useful information. At the top, you'll see the general device info set during the provisioning process. In the middle, there's device health information including RSSI, SNR, and packet error rate, shown as averages on the left and graphed over time on the right. At the bottom, you'll see the log stream for this device. On the right side of the slide, I've taken some screenshots of the details of an example exchange between the device and platform, as seen by the platform. First, at the top right, you'll see the device's join request, followed next by the join accept sent by the network server. Next, you see the device sending confirmed data upstream, and finally, the downstream acknowledgement of the received packet. Lastly, you can view a time series graph of your sensor data by clicking Sensor Data tab next to the Device Log Stream tab in the Device Entity page. Finally, I'd like to quickly cover Output Profiles found under the Integrations tab on the left. I quickly mentioned these during the introduction. These Output Profiles allow you to pump data out to any cloud application you choose using MQTT or REST profiles. All you need to do is provide the proper host and credentials. Additionally, MachineQ has implemented native connections directly to Azure and AWS to make connecting to those services much easier. Complete instructions on implementing those profiles can be found at https colon slash slash docs.machineq.net. And with that, our demo is complete. If you'd like further information, please reach out to us at info at machineq.com. We will now explain Virata modules in more detail, including module design guidelines to help you jumpstart in developing your product. Virata LoRa module that is within the ST Discovery Kit offers a quick time to market, ease of implementation, and a small form factor sensor product design capability. Further, Murata module offers flexibility in use, and this will be explained with key specification highlights, as well as different models being available with same hardware. First, let me explain the two models that are available, the MQ100 or MQ200. The key difference is that MQ100 can be used if you choose to run all software code within the module. We call this OpenMCU as customers can program their code within the module. The MQ200, on the other hand, 
is the modem version and has a closed MCU with firmware running on it that cannot be changed. Both models will be explained in more detail in the upcoming slides. The block diagram shows the major components within the module, and this includes ST Micro microcontroller and Samtech LoRa IC. Murata has chosen these components to cover a wide frequency range of operation, industrial temperature range, optimal output power for long distance range coverage, power control for adaptive data rate handling in LoRaWAN specification, more than enough flash and RAM available to meet sensor design, and more than enough pinouts for sensor attachments to the module. Both models are footprint and pin compatible, and this is all available in a small form factor. Lastly, this module is designed to allow lower LoRaWAN channel bandwidth support, which may be introduced in future LoRa specifications from LoRa Alliance. So the module can support even down to 7.8 kilohertz channel bandwidth. To highlight in more detail, I want to first mention the frequency range of operation in more detail. Murata has chosen SX1276 for the module as frequency range covers 860 to 900 megahertz for the module. This frequency range allows Murata module to be used in the United States, Canada, EU, Japan, and the other Asia Pacific countries such as South Korea, Vietnam, India, to name a few. Next, the output power will be discussed. Murata module is designed to bring out the separate RF transmit path from the SX1276. This was done to allow output transmit power up to 20 dB in 1 dB step or up to 14 dBm in 1 dB step. The RF output power adjustment capability is important since LoRaWAN has adopted data rate that includes output power adjustment from the network server. So the Murata module supports this feature, allowing output power adjustment so the range coverage can be controlled and interference is minimized to other sensor devices in the same area. The regulatory certification process can be time-consuming and costly, and to address this, Murata module has gone through a limited module certification covering FCC and Industry Canada. CE certification is also available, and Murata module is covered with RF conducted tests completed, which allows in-product RED certification to be completed by customer with radiation test. The limited module certification that was mentioned was completed with the reference antenna as shown here that includes PCB trace antenna, chip antenna, and external whip antenna. These options allow you to design in the lowest cost antenna solution or smallest antenna solution if you're size constrained or sensor design constraints requiring external antenna. For more information on antenna, please contact Murata. As mentioned earlier about MQ100 and MQ200, differences between the two parts will be highlighted. First, let's cover the MQ100. The MQ100 comes with OpenMCU, meaning there is no firmware loaded during module production. Customers can design the application code to be included into MCU, thus eliminating the need for additional MCU outside the module, allowing lowest component count and cost saving for in-device sensor product design. And also to highlight again, the MCU on the module has 192 kilobytes of flash and 20 kilobytes of RAM. And to give you an example of how much code space you will have left to add application layer, Class A Laura One stack takes up roughly around 35 kilobytes of flash. 
add battery for power source, desired sensors such as temperature sensors or other sensors, 50 ohm antenna, and product casing to complete the sensor product design. Now, MQ200, which is a modem version module, and it is preloaded with firmware during module production. The firmware on MQ200 includes LoRaWAN stack and a mid-layer AT command code that sends data through the UART interface. As you can see from the block diagram, the host microcontroller on your product only needs to implement AT command to send data for simple operation. Just like the MQ100, all you need to add is battery, temperature sensor as an example, 50 ohm antenna. Of course, keep your existing microcontroller in the design. Add a product case, your design is complete. Now, I also want to quickly highlight key schematic and layout design guideline for the Murata module. First, I would like to point out that you must connect pin one to pin 48 as this will allow microcontroller within the module to turn on off the fast clock that is within the module. By doing so, you can achieve lowest current consumption during the sleep mode. And as you can probably guess, sleep mode current consumption is the most critical factor for battery operator sensor design due to sleep mode being significantly longer than active mode operation for sensors that sense data very few times a day. Murata has reference schematic available to cover this as well as other recommendations for schematic design. The printed circuit board layout design is critical to optimizing the radio performance to its limit. There is not enough time to cover all layout guidelines, but key points will be mentioned here as this will save you time and effort during your PCB layout design stage. First and foremost point is the layout guideline for the area underneath the module. The picture shown in this slide is a good example of a proper way to lay out underneath the module. Notice the metal ground is flooded underneath the module along with the ground VS that connects well with the main ground plane that is typically the PCB layer immediately below the main component metal layer. This ensures RF ground current to have the shortest path as possible to the main ground plane. Note also that no signal trace is underneath the module. This will help to reduce any potential noise that can reduce the sensitivity of the radio signal. Murata will be providing schematic and layout review, so contact Murata to plan for this service. We see LoRa Asset Tracker as a very interesting extension to the current ST LoRa dev kit. We believe that adding an accurate device localization when in a LoRa network, but also when outside the network, could help to bring even more value to your new product and explore new use cases. Being able to locate an asset and its environmental sensors has many advantages and application, for instance, for fleet management. For example, a store manager having its own LoRa network can monitor its truck delivery to its store branches. In that scenario, when the truck gets into the LoRa gateway coverage, a notification can be sent to the owner and accurate location can be transmitted. When off network, it is recording the position in telemetry so we can rebuild the path to the truck later on that record being able to be transmitted only when back in the range of a gateway. Many other applications could be for asset or good tracking or even pet or child tra tracking. You can extend the formally presented ST LoRa dev kit to become an asset tracker. For that, you just have to add a new Genesis Arduino shield. Genesis stands for Global Navigation Satellite System. It allows to accurately position an asset using satellite. ST has a shield called X-Nucleo Genesis 1A1 
that is published on ST.com. It includes an ST Tesio Live Free F module that includes a very powerful ST GNSS solution that is multi-constellation taking advantage of GPS, Galileo, GLONASS, Beidou, QSS to improve accuracy. It can also do geofencing on the GNSS module, limiting then the amount of data required to send back to the cloud that is very interesting for a LoRa network and to save even further the device battery. In case some of you need a smaller form factor for asset tracker, ST has created a compact reference design, including the similar BOM to the modular solution that we saw before, and adding to it battery management and even USB Type-C connector to recharge. That small form factor is about two inches by an inch and a half, and is a great example of compact design and can be easily reused for data logging. It is available in a full kit presented in a blister as shown in the lower left corner of this slide. I invite you to go to st.com and look for steval-storket01, where you will be able to get access to all the schematic gearbers if you want to use it as a starting point for your own design. For those two asset trackers design, the modular one based on the ST LoRa dev kit augmented by Genesis Shield and the small form factor reference design we just saw before. We are using the same firmware that is already published on www.st.com. You just have to search for ST ATR LoRa 1. That firmware is running on STM32 L0 of the Murata module using LoRa 1 1.02 class A, and adding advanced power management features using, for example, the accelerometer to detect if the device should go in a sleep mode or be active and tried. With Machine Q, we work to create a UI under MQ portal in order to map an asset. We can visualize the street address by using the last known position pin on the map. We can also monitor the altitude temperature, and humidity of an asset. Using a different tab of the same MQ portal webpage, we can discover the past history of an asset. Inside the network, we get a near real-time accurate location. Outside of the network, the device records the locations for many hours, so we can rebuild the full path when the device is back online. To have access to the MQ portal solution, please contact MachineQ. Thanks everyone for attending that webinar today. We really hope the webinar was helpful and brought you the right level of information so you can start to use the ST LoRa dev kit and initiate prototyping your new product. As a summary of what you saw today, after a first introduction of ST MachineQ and Murata IoT value proposition, we presented in great detail the ST LoRa dev kit and how to build it or to get started, get a first user experience using MQ Central, and how to acquire the hardware. We also presented the GNSS LoRa use case based on the ST LoRa dev kit and also the small form factor reference design. These dev kits are the tools to help you to go faster to market and simplify your learning curve to create your own product. So we hope you better understand how that dev kit will help you. From the hardware product side, it features a Murata module including the STM32L0. For sure, ST is putting its full STM32 portfolio at your disposal if you need a different flavor of microcontroller to satisfy your specific use case. Before closing that webinar and go to the Q&A session, I just want to show you again the great ongoing deal that MachineQ has put together, including the ST LoRa dev kit and featuring the Murata module. Just go to store.machineq.com, create an account, and order your kit. We hope most of you will take advantage of it and will create innovative new products based on it.